Welcome back, fight fans, to net another week of Shooting the Shit podcast here on the Loudmouth MMA Podcast Network, also held on CombatPress.com. Uh, I'm your host, Riley Contact, for our 26th episode of this, uh, what is some call the worst podcast in MMA. We proudly take that foot. Uh, before we introduce our guest today, of course, I would like to plug our sponsor. We would like to give a thanks to uh, Cornelius and Sons, um, uh, home improvement projects that need to be mostly, uh, if you're from Illinois, if uh, you have any indoor uh, home improvement projects, seeing as it's getting colder, I know my heat was on last night while I was sleeping. Again, if you're in the Illinois area, go to Facebook and go to Cornelius and Sons uh, on Facebook and ask for Raul. He'll be... He does very good work. He'll give you good prices. Like I said, anything from bathroom to flooring to kitchen, he does it all. So again, that is Cornelius and Sons on Facebook. Uh, today, we have another great guest on the show. He is a UFC veteran. Uh, he has also dabbled in some professional boxing outside of MMA. Uh, he is Nolan Hernandez. Nolan, thank you for being on the show today, brother. Yeah, man. Happy to be on it. Yeah, it looks like you brought a little friend with you to the show as well. Is that a... Yeah, I know. My, my, cat, my cat just seems to want to barge in right now. Yeah, uh, no worries. Uh, we've this isn't a one-on-one -on -one show. Always feel bring uh, be, uh, wow. Feel free to bring friends. Apparently, I can't speak today. I have three of these interviews, so uh, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna be running out of words by the end of the day. Uh, so Nolan, great to have you here. Um, you know, you you were on the UFC roster uh, for two fights. Uh, obviously, that run didn't work out as as well as you hoped it would. Uh, you know, you were released after the second fight, actually, against the guy who's on the show for this week, um, Mace, um, Jesus Christ, I can't speak today, uh, Mason Jack Jones, Shore. Jack Shore, thank you, God, I'm all these Welsh guys, this is why <laughs> this is the worst show on the, uh, on the MMA podcast, just so you know, uh, so yeah, we had Jack Shore on for this week's show, so this is the first time ever we've had back-to-back uh, -back guests who have actually fought each other, um, mm -hmm. so Nolan, just take a look, uh, taking a look back on your UFC run, uh, how it didn't work out the way it wanted you, what are some things that when you take a look at the fights in the aftermath that you wish you would change would have done or changed going forward in your MMA career? Oh man, uh I can't really say that I would you know, I would have liked to of course have gotten some finishes and some wins in the uh in my uh, UFC career. Unfortunately, you know, it's life, it's fighting. These things are very unpredictable. I can't predict what's going to happen what, you know. Uh all I can do now is just kind of uh accept the fact that uh, I lost my last two. Uh, I got released from the UFC and uh, just continue moving forward. I don't, I mean, I'm still, I'm 26 years old. I'm young. You know, if, if I really want to get back to the UFC, I will, you know, and, and, and if, if that's the goal that I choose to uh, keep pursuing, then, then I'll keep pursuing it. Uh, right now, what I'm, my focus is on is on um, things outside of fighting. Of course, I, I still want to fight. I'm looking, I, I'm, eh, I can't even talk either. I'm actually looking <laughs> to book my next fight very soon. Uh, I'm just going to take it fight by fight, see what happens. And uh, if I happen to get back into the UFC, I will. If not, then I'm okay with that too. For sure. And so, like, what are some of those main focuses you're talking about now that the UFC is over? What, what's, what's the main focus that you're having right now? So, I'll just go out and say it. So, I'm looking to pursue opening up and owning my own gym. Um, I have years of experience running a nonprofit that I started by myself years ago that I actually let go to, you know, just focus on fighting full time. Uh, obviously, fighting is my passion. It's something that I want that I want to continue doing. And I want to continue sharing the knowledge that I've that I've gone over the past 10 years. Um, you know, and, and my focus really, I want to, you know, put my energy and time into youth, youth martial arts. Um, it did a lot for me, and I just want to reciprocate what um, what it gave me, what fighting gave me, what martial arts gave to me, and I want to give that to another young man or young woman who wants to, uh, you know, I don't know, pursue fighting. And even if they don't want to pursue fighting, a lot of things, you know, and it's, it's cliche to say and it's corny, but, you know, it's given me personally a lot of confidence. Um, it's given me you know, discipline, it's, uh, you know, physically, I'm, I'm healthy, mentally, I'm healthy. Um, so I just want to, I want to give that, I want to give back to everybody that, um, that, you know, wants to come in through my doors in the future. And uh, yeah, just, you know, set them up right. Yeah, I think that's a really good cause. And, uh, you know, one of the big things is keeping kids off the streets. I, it, sports in general do that. But I think that there's a there's the element of martial arts, the respect, the discipline, like you were talking about, that I think is really good for kids. And I think that's a great idea. 
Um, I know the gym that I train at has a kids club and those are all really good kids and they obviously they enjoy it. And, you know, it's, I mean, for kids more or less, you're teaching them a skill and all that, but it's also self-defense. It's, it's teaching confidence and things like that. So, I mean, you know, as, as much uh, as people look down on, on fighting, I think there's a lot of aspects of it that are actually very positive, especially, especially to children. So I really appreciate that. Uh, that's your main focus. I think that's, that's really, uh, uh, you know, respectable. Um, so, uh, in terms of that, that, you know, project that you're working on, is that, is that something that's far off or is that something that you, that you can see in the near future happening? I I see that in the very near future. And I'm talking about, um, late 2021, maybe early 2022. Uh, it's in the near future, you know, it's, it's like a year, it's about a year from now, you know, but you know, as, as you and I both know, time flies so quick. And uh, with the whole pandemic and everything going on, with everything being closed, I think that by the time this is all cleared and in, in, uh, behind us, I think it'll be the perfect time for me to uh, to to get things going, uh, get things started. So, you know, in the meantime, I've been, you know, just, you know, working away, hustling and, and just saving up the money. And uh, I think that for a lot of people, the pandemic has been bad, but I've, you know, just kind of, I think it's been kind of good for me, you know, just putting away the money and uh, saving it up. Yeah, definitely saving money. Uh, I, I bought a house actually at the beginning of the pandemic, like maybe the first couple of weeks of lockdown. And I think that uh, it was easier saving money when I wasn't allowed to go anywhere, you know, spending a couple right. hundred dollars at the bar as opposed yeah. to putting it in the bank and trying to put a down payment on a house and paying for a mortgage. So I can, I definitely understand that. So after your two uh, UFC bouts, uh, it looks like, per your record, you've taken a few boxing matches before the lockdown actually happened. It was, you know, three relatively quickly in a row. Um, you know, is, is pro boxing where you're going to put your focus, or are you still planning on being more of a MMA fighter? Are you going to split it 50-50? How's that working? Oh, man, you know what? If I'm being honest with myself and people that uh, and the people that are close to me know this, um, I took those boxing fights as not really a serious thing. Um Obviously, between, you know, I, I wasn't working the whole time between my, uh, me getting to the UFC, you know, so I was just trying to, I was living off of fight money. And so boxing was just a way for me to quick or make, bu- uh, quick, uh, make a quick buck. Um, wasn't ever anything ever serious that I, you know, I, I didn't ever really take it too serious. Um, although I probably should have, um, you know, I would spar for two weeks and then go take the boxing fight and stuff. Um, again, it wasn't very serious for me. Um, I will say that boxing at least at the level that I that I competed at and what I was able to watch. It, it's kind of, it, honestly, it's a shit show where you have guys that are, I don't know, 10 and 0 fighting guys that are, you know, have completely scrub records and clearly padding them up. Whereas MMA, it's like you could get a tough fight right off the bat. You know, your first two, three fights are tough guys. You know, they're never guaranteed fights. Whereas boxing is the first like 10 to 12, 13 are guaranteed wins. And, you know, I got in with some guys that were, you know, high level boxers. And, um, you know, I never, I I don't think I ever got, um, I was never in any danger. And these guys are boxers, man. I'm not a boxer. I I can box, but, um, you know, it was, you know, I I stood my ground with these guys. And honestly, um, you know, the boxing record, again, it wasn't very serious. I have a, you know, terrible boxing record. But what I'm trying to get at is, I stood toe to toe with these guys, and I think that I even won some of these fights. But you know, unfortunately, when you're when you're going into boxing, you're going into their territory. Right. They're obviously the A side. Again, it's very political, and uh, you know, obviously, even though I think I won those fights decisively, I got it taken away from me. But you know, it's all good. Again, I was doing it for the money, quick buck, um, it, and plus it was some cool experience. You know, um, got to see that world of boxing, and um, not something that I would ever pursue professionally, like you know seriously but uh you know it was cool while it lasted for sure and i understand that and and, and i you're not the only guy obviously that just takes boxing bouts or grappling bouts for an extra buck everybody does and that's just what you got to do um so obviously in terms of your mixed martial arts career i mean what's next uh are you under contract with anybody are you in talks with any promotion to be taking a fight anytime soon Um, because obviously I, i think the main goal is to get back into one of the major league promotions so what's the next step Absolutely. So the next step uh, is I, I already talked to my management about this, you know, looking for uh, looking for a fight. So I'm looking to fight within the next four months. I'm, I'm going to give myself this this uh, upcoming month to just get ready and, and uh, I guess get back into shape. And then when I feel like I'm, you know, ready, that's when my management will start looking more aggressively. Uh, but if, you know, any particular promotion that I, that I was thinking about or were, that we're in discussion with, not any one part, not any one in particular, but uh, 
<laughs> Alipay is always good. They've always treated me uh, well. Uh, you know, I, I know there's some East Coast promotions that are really good. Uh, I believe like uh, CES. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, what, whoever, whoever wants to contract me. But uh, <clears throat> if I was to get a, a contract even with one or Brave or or uh, UAE fighters or, you know, whoever, whoever really wants to fight or, or uh, contract me for a fight, you know, I'm willing to take it. And, um, again, it's just taking it fight by fight. For sure. And, yeah, a couple of the ones that you mentioned are definitely good. CES actually just had a show uh, on the Wednesday with uh, John Gotti in the main event, which was interesting. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you mentioned Brave. I mean, that's a that's an up and coming promotion who uh, actually has started feeding fighters into the UFC. They really weren't doing that until like the last few months. And uh, actually, a guy we just had on the show, uh, Jose Shorty Torres, uh, has been fighting for them and is real happy with them. So I, I've heard good things about Brave. Uh, although I do, uh, most of their fights are in Europe and in uh, the Middle East. So that would be a you know you'd have to do the whole. Uh, lockdown and self quarantine. Uh, if you were to take fights overseas, uh, so that's right. never fun. Um, but yeah, I mean, LFA is definitely a great fit, and as you know, they're a pipeline back into the UFC, and you fought there already, so that's that would that makes a lot of sense to me as well. Uh, so one other thing that uh, uh, one person had talked to me when I was talking to them about uh, doing an interview with them today is uh, you're famous at the weigh-ins uh, for the one day or the one time you gave uh, I think it was Brittany Palmer uh, a flower. What was the <laughs> what was the story behind that and how did that work out for you? So the whole roast thing, I mean, uh, you know, for whoever watches this, and you know, it, it's it's not a new thing. It's something that I did. I fought for Bellator. And I did the same thing, you know, I pulled out the rose, um, you know, I just have this thing with roses. I like roses. I have uh, uh, two tribal roses uh, on my shoulders and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's something that I uh, closely relate to myself. I just like, I just like roses, man. Um, there wasn't, you know, what's funny is I don't even think I, um, I didn't, I didn't think in my head, I was like, oh, I'm just going to go give this rose. It was kind of more of a spontaneous thing. I was like, all right, I'm just going to, I have a track record of doing this anyway, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to throw it out there. And uh, you know it kind of caught on. You know, I, I got some uh, some good uh, some good feedback on it. Uh, I believe Brittany Palmer even reposted it on her uh, on her Instagram story from what somebody told me. And uh, yeah, it was, it was something cool. And, you know, so I, I think that you can't just be a fighter. You know, there's whole entertainment to it. Yeah. You know, and maybe some yeah. some people thought it was corny. Whatever. I mean, I, I it's, it was my thing. It'll it'll probably continue. But uh, yeah, there was no real like plan behind it. It was just kind of a spontaneous thing to do. I was just like, I'm just gonna grab some roses and you know, give it to whoever, you know, the, the first pretty girl I see and pretty bomber was there and why not? <laughs> Perfect. I mean, that's the, that's the person I think I'd give the rose to as well. Uh, big, big fan of Brittany Paul, although her art's pretty cool too. I don't know if you've ever seen her art. She's a really good artist. Mm, I haven't. Oh yeah. Check out her website. She's got some really cool stuff on there. Uh, now, before we get to the weekend's uh, UFC card, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Halloween, any big Halloween plans for you? <laughs> well, I mean, because of the pandemic, I don't, I don't think so. But uh, me and my girlfriend are uh, thinking about dressing up as uh, Cort. She's gonna dress up as Morticia, and I'm gonna be Cortez. And I have a few pets that uh, I'm, I'm hoping to, uh, to fill in the rest of the Adams family. You there know, you and, go. Uh, we'll see how it goes. That's a that's a good one. Uh, yeah, it was uh, Gomez Adams, but uh, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. But yeah, that's a good one. I think that's a that, that's a that's a great costume. Uh, you said your wife or your girlfriend or your wife. My girlfriend. I'm uh, married yet. She must not I'm far, like far from that. Far from that, brother. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Uh, awesome. Now let's get to the UFC card at hand. Uh, you know, this weekend we have UFC 254. If I'm not mistaken, it is taking place on Fight Island. Um, as are many of the cards in the recent times here. Uh, so we got a full five-fight main card. You and I are going to discuss the top three fights on the card. Um, you know, one, one of the fights is a women's fight that had a really late replacement. Uh, most people, unless you're a, a nerd like me who literally only watches regional MMA, probably not too intact with this person. Uh, so we'll just talk about the top three. The first fight is a heavyweight bout. You got former Bellator champion Alexander Volkov taking on, uh, really, who's become a, a hero of sorts in Walt Harris. Uh, you know, the, the tragic story about his stepdaughter and all that. I uh, believe he's actually running for office in his local uh, municipality. Um, but, you know, a, a guy who a lot of people have rallied behind in Walt Harris. So, um, Nolan, why don't you give us the breakdown of what you see in this fight? And if you got a prediction for who takes it home, give it to us. You know what? I think that Walt Harris is probably the better athlete of these two. I look at Alexander Volkov, and uh, you know I look at his past past experience, uh, past performances, and 
And it's just his body type is what kind of throws me off about him because he's just almost so tall and lanky mm-hmm. that he fi- that he shows it in the fight, right? He, like, the lanky, tall people will tend to move a little awkwardly. Yep. Um, they're they're long, so he, he, I think he's gonna have a good jab and stuff. But uh, I think uh, Walt Harris is probably better equipped to uh, to wear Volkov down, and I th- I think I think Harris might get the finish, honestly. I think he'll get a finish. Probably okay. TKO. I think I think I think I'll, Wall Harris will be a little too much for uh, for Volkov, and he'll probably TKO. Maybe, maybe second or third round. My opinion. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, I agree with you. I think Harris is definitely the better natural athlete. I think he's probably physically more uh, physically more strong than uh, than Volkov. But like you said, Volkov very lanky, sits behind his jab very well, good striker. Um, you know, I'm looking at Volkov's record. You know, he's fallen on hard times. He's one and two in his last three. But I mean, before that, he knocked out Fabricio Verdum, knocked out Stefan Struve. You know, uh, pretty one-sided decision over Roy Nelson. So I mean, Volkov is definitely no pushover. I think this will be a glorified kickboxing match with four ounce gloves. Uh, and and I, I agree. I think if I think if Harris catches him, I, I, I'm the opposite. I think if Harris catches him early, I think Harris takes the fight. I think as the fight goes on, though, I think Volkov will go will get stronger. He'll sit behind that jab. He'll gauge the distance and he'll outstrike. Like Harris likely to a decision victory. Um, in the co-main event of 254, we got the middleweights. We got former middleweight champion Robert Whitaker. Uh, he will be taking on a guy who, if uh, if he wins, will probably be the next contender to Israel Adesanya. That is Jared Cannonier. Uh, so, what do you think about this one, Nolan? That's a good one, man. And uh, me and Jared fought on the same card in Copenhagen. Uh, the guy's an animal, man, but, I, I mean, that's just, that's just a great fight, honestly, overall. Robert Whitaker being Robert Whitaker, obviously the former uh, middleweight champion. Uh, Jared's like the, you know, the up-and-comer guy. Um, but I would honestly say that Robert Whitaker might edge it out. I My heart kind of leaned more towards him, but... Uh, Something in my head also tells me that Jared Cannonier has got a good chance of taking that back or taking that win. Mm-hmm. Uh, the reason I say that is because Robert Whitaker is kind of uh, – he's, what, on a losing streak right now, right? He's uh... Uh, Whitaker won his last fight. He uh, It was oh, okay. a decision over Darren Till in July. Oh, okay, okay, that's right. Um, I forgot about that one, too, till I just looked it up. Yeah, I just, the, just the last thing I remember from him was uh, fighting uh, Adesanya yeah. getting KO'd. Uh, you know – I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay with Robert Whitaker and say that he's going to win. Don't know how. That's just kind of up for, up for I don't know, debate. But uh, it's a good fight overall, man. Yeah, yeah. I think it's good matchmaking. And this was the fight I said to make after after uh, Whitaker's last win and Cannoneer's last win. I thought this was the fight to make. So good job on the matchmaker's part. You know, Cannoneer is a guy who actually started his career at heavyweight, and now he's all the way down to middleweight. So that, that, I mean, that's that's right, just, that's right. that tells you a lot about uh, his transformation. But he's on a three-fight win streak all by knockout. Knocked out Jack Hermanson, which in what I considered an upset. Uh, TKO'd Anderson Silva with leg kicks. That was when Anderson hurt his knee, I believe. And then uh, a TKO over Dave Branch. You know, uh, you know, Cannoneer, I think, has the pure power advantage in terms of just pure raw power. I think Whitaker has similar power, just a tad less. Uh, he's far more technical than Cannoneer, especially on the feet uh, when it comes to movement, you know, footwork, getting uh, cutting off the cage, things like that. Uh, I, I'm also going to take Whitaker. I don't know if he knocks out Cannoneer, but if he does knock out Cannoneer, I think it'll be late second, early third round. Mm-hmm. Now, moving on to the main event, this is the one everyone's waiting for. And then, so before we talk about the main event, um, definitely since the pandemic has started, pay per view numbers have been up. I think one of the reasons being is, is that live attendance is not a, is not allowed, so those people now have to stay home and watch. I think the other reason is is that. You know, we were deprived of sports, so people were just looking to uh, to watch anything that's on. And obviously, we've had limited baseball season. We've had uh, discontinued and then restarted NBA and hockey season. But the last pay-per-view still, uh, which was Israel and Paulo Costa, still did about 700,000-plus pay-per-views, which is a pretty damn good number. Um, now, we have Habib Nurmagomedov and Justin Gaethje. Do you think that this pay-per-view will reach a million buys? You know what? Uh, I'm not. I'm gonna be honest and say that I don't know how the pay per view. I, I don't know those numbers, the whole pay per view and stuff. Um, 
I'm kind of one of those guys that just kind of watches the fight. I don't always pay attention to the numbers, although I do sometimes. Um, I think that this is going to be a huge, it's going to be a huge sale. I mean, not just for the United States, but in Europe. And then yeah. um, you're talking about back in the Middle East, like in Abu Dhabi, people, you know, in that area, people are going to be buying this because of Habib. Um, you know, and I think Habib over the years has turned into such a star that, you know, you know, reg- you know, people that don't even know about fighting are just going to be like, oh, hey, well, there's this, there's this fight card coming on. Well, you know, people that, you know, like me, maybe they got some buddies at the house. They're just going to want to order it just because it's just one of those fights that you just got to watch, even though you might not necessarily know who Habib is or Justin is. You know, it's it's going to be it's going to be a huge sale. Um, I just don't know. how. I, again, I, just, I don't know the numbers, but it's going to be big. For sure. And, you know, some of the biggest numbers we've seen with pay-per-view have, have come as a result of the pandemic. Uh, Masvidal Usman broke a million buys. You know, that was a big one. And, and, and again, even Israel Adesanya Costa was 700 plus thousand. You know, I, there's a good chance that I think this breaks a million just based on Habib. But, I mean, you know, the, the, the random fan who sees Justin Gaethje and is just like, dude, this guy's a violent dude. I think that that'll also sell the fight against the guy who just has no one's even been close to beating. So, uh, right. in terms of the breakdown of this fight how do you see this fight going and what is your prediction okay so this i feel like i'm a little better equipped to answer um just because i mean obviously training at aka um i've seen what the russians bring whenever they're at the gym uh and i mean obviously it's it's not it's not a it's not hard to see that it's uh the wrestling and and the pressure that they put on you Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, Habib's got that going. I, I still don't think that Habib is, is, uh, is as articulate when it comes to striking as he is with his grappling. Right. Um, I think that Justin has a huge advantage when it comes to that. Not just that, but I mean, Justin's a good wrestler and he's a dog. You know, he's a, he's, the guy's a dog, man. I've seen some of his, I've seen a lot of his fights, you know going back to pfl days you know where he's using kicks to finish guys and you know i don't i don't know if uh habib is ready for those kicks especially if if justin goes really low like half kicks yeah um if if justin can keep the distance and use his striking in the um in the in the uh, in the pocket without getting taken down i think it might be a good night for justin but if habib can pressure Justin back against the cage, take him down and do whatever he does, do what he does to everybody else. I think Justin might have an answer for it early in the in the fight, but as the fight goes on, he's just going to wear Justin down. Yep. And, uh, you know, I think might get a uh, maybe unanimous decision over Gaethje, but I don't necessarily think that Habib would be able to finish Gaethje. Whereas I believe that Justin has the power to finish Habib, mm-hmm. if 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 it gets to that. But uh, you know, it's just again, this is this is a hard uh, it's a hard prediction because I mean, obviously Habib is, is undefeated for a reason. Justin's a dog. He's gonna go. I'm sure he's gonna go out there and and, uh, and prove why why he's there, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm just gonna go with Habib, just because uh, you know he's undefeated. The guys, the guy's an animal. Yeah, you know, people have, people have tried to beat him. They haven't, you know. I, I I was thinking that other people were gonna beat him before Justin, but it's just one of those things where he just proves people wrong. He proved me wrong multiple times uh, to the point where it's like, okay, you can't, you know, you can't um, you can't go against what is uh, what what he shows all the time. So. Right, right. I mean, he's a guy that I've heard, and I'm sure you can attest that he, he'll ragdoll guys a few weight classes above him with his wrestling. I, I've definitely heard that from training partners before. Uh, but yeah, I think your breakdown's accurate. I think I think the big key here is going to be leg kicks. Justin Gaethje is one of the best leg kickers in the in probably the lower weight class. Is anything yeah. below? You know, he, he's nasty. And and yeah, no one, no, nobody ever talks about the fact that he's a collegiate wrestler. He has a college wrestling background. Um, now, will that wrestling be better than Habib's? I doubt it because Habib has shown that he has better wrestling than guys with collegiate wrestling backgrounds. So. Um, I agree also with the sentiment you said. The, the longer the fight goes on, I think the longer it favors uh, Habib. I have seen Justin get tired before, and Habib doesn't really seem like he gets tired too much. 
Um, so I'm with you. I, I will take Khabib here. Um, it's either going to be a late fourth, fifth round submission, or like you said, he will likely take it to decision. So I, I think your breakdown was accurate there. Uh, so Nolan, that is all. Uh, so thank you very much for stopping on the show. I will give you some time here to whore yourself out. Tell us where we can find you. If you want to shout out anybody, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, you know, just uh, follow me on Instagram, Suave underscore 135, Twitter, uh, Suave underscore 135. That's all I really have to plug in. Uh, the last thing, actually, is just uh, be on the lookout for my next fight. Uh, I obviously wasn't able to show my full uh, skill set in my last fight, and it was very disappointing. But uh, I'm just moving forward and uh, looking to showcase my skills to the best of their ability my next fight. So just stay tuned, guys. We will, and I, as I say with other fighters on the show, I will make sure that once your fight is announced that it is retweeted, it is put on social media, we will keep an eye on you. Any friend of the show is a friend of ours. So I will plug myself real quick, and I'll let you go here. Uh, make sure you check out Combat Press, uh, Loudmouth MMA Podcast Network, new episodes every week of this fine show, uh, if you can call it that. Uh, also go to MMA Intel, new scouting reports every week on non-UFC fighters. Uh, we got rankings, uh, prospect rankings, predictions, matches to make after each UFC card, all the good stuff there. We also put the archives of this podcast on that uh, website as well. Um, and that's pretty much all I have. So, again, Nolan, thank you for stopping on the show today. We really appreciate having you here. Of course. All right. So, for Nolan Hernandez, I am Riley Contact saying keep watching the fights, keep watching the show, and go fuck yourselves. Good night. <laughs>